Hey guys, Mike here with Mike's Bags, and today I want to talk about shot types, more specifically cut shots. You know, I think a cornhole, the first thing you got to learn is to throw the slot shot, right? You got to be able to slide the bag in the hole. Second, you want to throw a block, be able to pull the string, stop that bag a little short, and control where you're putting your block on the board. Third, I think you want to learn that push or collect shot to be able to, to not only throw the block, but be able to collect the block, push it in the hole, and take your bag with it. Fourth is the airmail. Those are your four basic shots. The slide, the block, the push or collect, and the airmail. You learn those, get really good at those, almost master those. The fifth shot I think that's most important is the cut shot. I talk a lot about cuts in our views, how bags can cut left to right, right to left. And, and, and there's so many things you can do with a cut shot besides just getting around that. You can get around bags, obviously, with it, which you use a lot. But you can also collect your bags with it. If you have a, a bag that maybe you throw a block or a little bit on your opponent's side, you can throw a cut shot to collect it, drag it in. Maybe a bag's hanging on the side of the hole that's on the opposite side or you can't step out for it, but you've got to go across and get it. Uh, you can also bully their opponent's bags out of the way. You can take hole control, you can get around uh, an opponent's block to lay your bag behind theirs. A lot of things you can do on the defensive side, a lot of things you can do on the offensive side. It's a very, uh, it's a great shot to learn to have in your arsenal. I, I think it really gives you a huge advantage over your opponent when when you're playing a game of cornhole. Now, just like a in cornhole, there are many different ways to throw cut shots, right? You know, the grips are different, the stances are different, the throws, the releases are all different. I'm going to show you the way I do it. As long as the bag's orientation is correct when it hits the board, that's what's going to cause the cut. So whatever works for you to get you in the bag in that position, do it, right? Try different ways. Again, I'm going to show you my way. Try it. It may work for you. If it doesn't, try to figure out your way. But I'm going to show you what you need the bag to do in order to get the cut. So let's go ahead and jump in, and we'll talk a little bit about the bag orientation, how to get the bag in that position, or what position we need the bag in, and why we need it there. Now, Typically, when I throw a cut shot, I want to use a bag that has a stickier side. I like carpet, but you know I do have a, a, a one Narnia carpet back here, the Deja Vu, which has got a little bit stickier slow side. But you want a sticky material because you need that material to grab the board to cause the bag to cut. If it's a slick material, you can cut them, but you 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 aren't cutting, you aren't getting as good of a cut out of it, as much of a cut. You're minimizing the amount of turn. So the stickier the bag, the more you can get that bag to turn and really change directions. And when I talk about cut. When we throw cornhole bags, we're always wanting to, you know, release it and throw that perfectly flat bag. We talk about that flat bag in the air. You want that flat bag because you don't want it to hit, right? Well, the kick is the cut. Why is the bag kicking? Because it's not flat. It's tilted one way or the other. In whichever direction it's tilted, so if it's tilted like this, the end that's up in the air, that's the direction the bag is going to cut or kick, right? So if you're throwing a bag and your bag is kicking to the right, then that means your bag has got the right side tilted up in the air. If it's kicking to the left, the left side is tilted in the air. Very simple to understand, sometimes hard to correct. Now, when you're throwing a cut shot, you want that bag to kick. So that kick becomes a cut, right? A kick is really an unintentional cut, is how I like to refer to it. So you don't want that bag flat, you want that bag tilted. And what happens is when that bag hits the board at an angle that's tilted, the, the friction, as the slow side or sticky side of the fabric hits the board, it, it, it slows that lower half of the bag down, but the top half keeps moving. So what happens is the bag keeps rotating, but now it's not rotating straight, or it's not hitting and spinning flat. It's hitting, it's rotating, but as it's going, this sticky side's holding it up, and it's causing the bag to kind of fall at an angle. So it's coming in this way, hits, and then slides that direction. It kind of makes that turn. The steeper the angle the more aggressive the cut to a point, you can get too far to where the bag turns into a wheel where it's going to hit and just kind of tumble end over end, which is not a bad thing. That's where you get that roll action going. So you can throw, you can turn your cut into a roll, almost create a, a roll cut, bag cut, roll, rut, whatever you want to call it. A lot of players will, you'll see a lot of players who throw their roll bags. You'll see it, the bag up on its axis on its side like this so that it hits and, and it, it kind of makes that arc across the board, right? It hits and cuts and almost rolls and cuts around a bag. And that's not a bad way. It's the way I like to throw my rolls because I don't really have to learn a new or incorporate a new release, a new grip to throw a roll bag. It's my cut. I just get a little more of a steeper angle on it, right? We'll get into rolls and flops a little in a, a different video. But for today, we're going to talk about the cut. So all right, when we talk about throwing a cut, one direction is always easier for every player to throw, and one is a little tougher. And it just depends on how you release the bag. If you release the way I talk about where the, you're rotating the wrist, you're exploding the fingers out, and you're, you're, you're getting that, that bag to spin off of your fingers, 
then when you're throwing that way, for me being right-handed, the left-to-right cut is easier. If you're left-handed, it's going to be the right-to-left is going to be easier. And why is that? Well, because if I get lazy, which sometimes we do, it's, it's kind of that, that lazy throw. You don't rotate your wrist all the way. You kind of keep it turned a little bit and release it. That back oh, naturally wants to come out with that tilt with the right side or the throwing arm side. If you're left-handed, it's going to be the left side up in the air, and you're going to get that bag to cut that direction or kick. For me, as I get a little tired or I get a little focused throwing in a game, that's where my bag will kick. My bag will kick left right on me because I'm not getting that full rotation of the wrist. I get a little lazy and my bag will hit and automatically want to go that way. If you're a player that throws and you rotate the bag out, you're coming up and you're, you're, you're slinging the bag out between your, your pointer finger and your thumb, you're rotating out this way. If you're that type of player, you're more likely you're going to get the bag to come out if you're right-handed you're going to be easier for you to throw a right-to-left cut. If you're left-handed, you're coming out, you're going to be able to throw that left-to-right cut. You're going to throw it away from your throwing hand. Either way, it's fine, but what's going to happen is you've got to learn the other way, right, to throw. So, like, for me, it's, it's much easier to throw a left-to-right cut. So I like to put myself in situations where I can most likely use a left-to-right cut. I want to stay away from the right-to-left cuts. I can throw them, just not as easily. I'm not as confident with them, right? But, so, when we're throwing the cut, it's all about the, to me, it's all about the palm. The palm really is going to dictate the side orientation of your bag. Your fingers, your fingers dictate the, the tilt up and down, and your palm dictates the left and right. So if I'm wanting my bag to cut left to right, I want my bag this way. So not sure at least I want my palm to match that angle. The steeper my palm is, that's the angle of that bag. The same as the other way, you're going to over-rotate it a little bit to get your palm and the bag to come out this way. So you're, whichever way your, your, your palm is facing when you release the bag, that's how the bag's right. Sounds simple, right? Well, it's not so simple. But throwing, whether you, whether you use a standard grip, you know, you're gripping it, you're throwing it like this, it's going to be the same that way. If you're using a butterfly grip, it's just, it's fine. If you're using the, the finger of the edge, you're using a claw grip, whatever you're doing, it's all in the end. When you release that bag, where is your palm? And that's where that bag is working, right? So when I'm throwing my grip, I, if I'm going to go, let's start with my left to right, because that's easiest for me. You know, I've got my stance down. I've got my bag. I grab my butterfly grip. I've got my bag here. Everything's ready to go. I'm not changing anything different from my regular throw. If I was going to throw a flat bag, this thing's the same. I, I want to keep things as simple as possible. I don't want to all of a sudden change my stance or change my grip too much because the more you change, the, the, the more there is a chance of making a mistake or not doing something exactly right or just getting out of kilter, right? If, if I'm, if I'm th I throw a cut, I'm, I'm changing my feet every time. It's just, it's just something else to go wrong, right? Keep everything as simple as possible. So everything here is the same. Everything here, it's all the same. All I'm changing is at my release. Everything's the same until I go to release. When I go to release, I'm throwing and I'm releasing like this. Normally, I'm releasing like this. For that collect right cut, I'm releasing like this. Almost like a handshake. You're coming up almost for a handshake, right? Just throwing your hand up to get that handshake. Actually, here's what I'm, I'm going to throw a flat bag first, and then I'll throw a cut bag. So I'll let you see both of them. So here's the flat bag first. And then here's the cut. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a different here. I will maybe try to slow those down. Let's see if I can break this down a little bit to show you the, you can see at the end where my hand is at release. Okay, yeah, I want to take a moment here. I want to break these throws down and kind of give you a little bit of a slow motion back and forth. Let you really see. Let's dive in a little deeper into what's going on here. I'm going to start with this, the flat back. I want you to see what kind of what the standard throw looks like. And you can watch, pay attention to the bag, not, not just the hand, I want you to look at the hand position, the way the bag is coming out, the rotation of the bag, how it's coming out fairly flat, but also look at the rotation, uh, how I rotate the bag from my side as I rotate up. You see that rotation coming up, the full rotation, and the hand coming flat, the fingers flattening out for the most part. Side this now, I want to run the cut, which for me is going to be the left to right cut, a left hander's right to left. So basically I'm cutting towards my throwing arm is the best way to say this. And it, what you'll see, most everything in the throw is identical. It's almost all, the only thing is I don't do a full rotation. My my wrist, my forearm, they don't fully rotate. So my hand, my, my pinky stays down a little lower at the release. My palm is pointing more to my left as I'm releasing that bag. And that bag comes out 
with a little bit of an angle to it. And that's what's going to give you that cut. It's going to that, cause that bag to turn, right? Let's say I want to go a right to left cut. Now, here's where I've got to change a little bit, not just my release, but I'm actually changing the way I'm coming up because normally I'm coming back and I'm coming up and rotating and exploding my fingers here, right? When I go this way, I have to come up and what I want to do is rotate that bag out. Instead of flipping it off my, flicking it off my fingers, I now have to rotate that bag out here. Again, for some of you, this is your natural throw. People sometimes will throw this way. Nothing wrong with it. Again, it's not the way I do it, but there's nothing wrong with it. They'll come up and you've got to flick it. And so what I do when I do that is flick it. I'm actually going to flip my hand across my face. By doing that, it gives that rotation. I'm, I'm letting my hand flick across, which causes the back to spin. But as I'm doing that, I'm also, I'm also trying to pinky over thumb, almost that way. But, but instead of just going over, I'm also trying to kind of cock my hand at a little bit of an angle, right? So it causes that bag to come out. A little tougher here. Um, see if I can get a good, good, good shot here for you. And so my hand comes across. I'll try to slow that down and give you a little, little bit of how you can see the difference, maybe even a side-by-side -side of my normal and that way and show you the difference. And now this is where it's different because it's a completely different motion. If you look, I'm rotating my hand much sooner when I come up. I'm making that rotation much quicker. I'm coming up and I'm actually flicking the bag or rolling the bag out between my index finger and my thumb. It's coming out at opening. It's not coming and spinning off my fingers like my normal throw. It's actually coming out the side of my hand there. And you see that bag now leaned angled the other way to give you that, that cut. Like I said, the main differences in these two, everything should look pretty close to the same. I try to keep these the same. The only difference is the hand, the forearm, the wrist. It's not getting the full rotation. It's almost, some people call it a lazy release because you're not actually rotating fully, so it becomes lazy. Um, and for me, that, that can be my fault as I get tired through the course of a tournament or a gameplay. I can forget and start to get a little lazy and not fully rotate and then I end up with that bag getting that kick, that left to right kick for me. All right, now I wanna do the flat bag and I'm gonna have the other kick. We're gonna go right to left here on the kick. And now you'll see these are pretty much completely different. Once I start to bring my arm, as soon as I start bringing my arm forward, things start changing. I'm rotating sooner on the cut bag than I am on the flat bag. The way I'm releasing, my arm is coming across my body because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to flick the arm across. That's what's giving that, that bag the rotation. The flat throw, the fingers exploding out is what's spinning the bags. The cut throw here, it's the arm. It's flicking that bag off my fingers, which is causing that, that rotation there. So I hope this is enough for you to see what I'm talking about and see the differences. Uh, I hope I dove deep, deep enough for you. I'm going to move the camera back now. I'm going to do some throws. Um, showing you the cut shot, showing you the back action from the full angle and let you see exactly what's going on. Um, so let's go ahead and jump to actual throws and show some of the cuts. Okay, here I want to run through some cut shots. Just throw you the kind of the end result of, of some of these cut shots here. And on this first one here, you're going to see these bags are actually cutting. It doesn't look like they're cutting very much, and I'll, I'll run through here in a second and show you some slow motion of them. But if you, if you notice, I'm throwing outside arm. And so that bag, the way it, the, the, the trajectory and the path it's on, it should hit the board and actually almost fly off the left corner there. It should go straight up and off. But because I have that 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 cut, and you can see that bag as it comes in. If you notice, look at the angle as it's coming in. It's actually angled, so it hits the board, and then it straightens out and runs straight up the board. It even has a little bit of a of a roll action to it because it's it's almost wanting to it, that that sticky side that, that carpet is grabbing that board sticking so much that it's actually causing that bag to get up and almost roll over the over the so if there was a bag there it would have rolled over the bag if there's a bag on the side it would have cut around beside it all right this next one here you're going to see there's actually a bag on the board and I'm coming in and cutting around it as you can see here and if you notice again the trajectory of the bag uh, it's it it should the where I'm throwing and where that bag hits it should miss the hole, it should come up probably just to the left of the hole there if it were straight, but because I have that tilt and see the tilt, the downward action on the bag, you'll see that bag hits and it starts to walk. Again, it almost starts to roll. These are the, the Buffalo Instincts on, on these two here that I've just shown you, which are pretty, which are fairly sticky bags. And so that's what's happened. They're sticking so much, they're wanting to actually get up and roll. All right, this next one, this is, this is actually the KDS Tracks. And you can see that first bag, it cut, I, I just missed. 
I just missed getting the hold. That second one I actually cut and got up in the hole. Actually, that second one I actually bullied the back a little bit, which is really what I want to do because it makes it even harder for my opponent to collect that. And the third one, I come in a little tighter and again, bully that bag over. And it's all I'm trying to do is push that bag out of my way. First bag, I can, you can see I went a little far out. I was trying to just get around cleanly. And then I made the adjustment on the next two and just clipped that bag just enough. But you can see the angle coming in, how that bag hits. If that was a flat bag, it would have flown off the right corner or even the right side of the board, the angle it's going at. Run through it here one more time for you. You can, you can just see those bags hit and they make a clear, clear turn. And we'll finish it. On here I am throwing, this is the, uh, the Galaxy Cornhole Solar Flare Carpet Bag. You can see that cut right around and, and dunk in the hole. This next one I'm actually going to cut around, but I'm actually going to stop it just short. It's going to cut, it hits the board a little, little lower down, it comes up actually takes hole control. To me, that's a, actually a perfect shot. It's better than going in the hole right there because now my opponent is is really not going to be able to collect. If, even if they have a great cut shot, they can't collect their, their bag sitting there because there's no way they can throw a cut to collect their bag and my bag and the bag they're throwing in. It's just it's almost near impossible to do. So we're, we'll keep running through it here. But you'll see the first bag, I want you to notice where it lands. It comes up and then it falls in. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually changing the landing spot on the board. Not only changing my throw here, my throw is pretty much the same. I'm changing where the bag is landing to stop it sooner, right? So I'm stopping it just shy of going in there. All right, there you have it. That's how you throw a cut shot, both the left to right and right to left cut. I try my best to really break things down and go in detail uh, as good as I could. Sometimes it's tough to really break down a throw because there's so much that happens in a short period of time in a throw. It's really hard to break it down frame by frame. Um, but I hopefully that's some of slow motion videos. You can even go back and rewatch as you need to, as you practice it. Go back and rewatch just the certain segments you want that you're looking for until you get the right action. Again, we're all unique, so the way that you're throwing a cut shot, maybe not exactly how I'm describing it. In the end, you want that bag tilt. If you get that bag tilt and you can do it consistently, that's all that matters. How how you get there doesn't matter as much as long as you can do it consistently. I will say when you go to practice. As I mentioned earlier in the video, made the very beginning, one way to throw a cut, it's always going to be easier than the other. So the left to right or right to left, one or the other is going to be easier for you depending on how you release the bag. That's the one to start with. Whichever one feels easiest, feels a little closer to, to natural, start with that one first and get good at throwing that one and then work to the other one. As you throw these the first few times, you may even struggle even getting the bag to the board. It, it can be, it can feel awkward. It can feel like you're starting all over again. Don't get too frustrated. Don't get too discouraged. Stick with it. You know, maybe even take a, take a section out of each practice and just say, all I want to do is, is practice cut shots. I don't care about putting the hole. I just want to get it that right tilt, that right angle on the back, and just get it to hit the board. Work on that first. And then you can once you get the tilt down consistently, then you can work on your aim and where you're landing it and how much cut you need for it. Anyway, I appreciate you guys so much for your support, and I thank you so much for watching the video.